There are several ways to go about beveling your geometry in LightWave. And if you're looking to perform multiple bevel operations on the same geometry, uh, rail bevel could be the solution for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a quick box. Okay, I'll center it. And say I wanted to end up with something like this. I'm going to hit B for bevel, and I was going to do multiple bevels. But I had a certain profile that I wanted to work with. I'm going to undo. Okay. And what I'll do is go into the background. Uh, I'll go into layer two and put the box in the background. Let's go to full screen so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to create just a quick little curve. Go in, come out, go in, come out, go in. And maybe something like this. Okay. I'm going to swap background and foreground layers so that the box is now in the foreground. Okay. Select this top polygon, come over to multiply, extend, and under the more drop down I've got rail bevel. And I'm gonna do it interactively right now and then we'll look at the numeric panel. So I'm going to bevel up and then I'm going to inset it. And this is all based off of the profile. Let's let's see in this window right here. Okay. So I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to move left and right to adjust the shift. Okay. And that locks it to the shift. I'm going to hold down control and move up and down and I can control the inset. Okay. And you can see for every point that I had on the curve, I've got a bevel. Okay. And I don't have to match it exact. Now notice that's a curve and this is, uh, this is a very linear step because it's just using the point information okay, to create the, the bevel. So if I hit N for numeric, we can see that there's shift. Okay, that's up and down, shifting away. And that's inset. Okay, that's inset. But now it does work a little different than the interactive bevel tool because if I move up and down, that's controlling the inset, and if I move side to side, that's controlling the shift. Okay. So it takes a little, little bit of time to get used to, but um, the interactive route is usually the route I end up going with. If you need to be dead on accurate, then that's where you might open up the, the numeric panel. So what I'm going to do is um, take a look at, now, that's a curve. If I freeze it, control D, okay, now it's a polygon and it has all those points. It doesn't matter that it, it's crossing over that way. Um, because rail bevel only looks at the actual points. Okay, so if I go multiply rail bevel, I'm going to hold down control and drag to the right to shift up. Hold down control and drag up and down. And now, instead of just a few points, it's using all the points that make up that curve. Okay, let's go into this window. See, it's using all the points in the background, so we have a lot more bevels going on. Okay. Now, here's the interesting thing, I think. If we go back, I'm just undoing, come back here and hit K for kill and just leave the points. And if I select my poly and go to rail bevel and shift up and inset, I don't even have uh, a poly or a, a curve back there. It's just points. It, it's reading the point order, so it's in the order of which the points were created. So this is a quick way of going about and doing multiple bevel operations uh, with, with one move. Now, something to keep in mind is that if no polygon is selected and we use it, it assumes every polygon is selected. Okay, And it allows us to do a rail bevel, do multiple bevel operations on multiple polygons. So it's a really quick way to, if you know you're going to be performing multiple um, bevel operations and you know the, the profile that you're, you're going for, it's a really quick way to work with it. The other um, benefit of working this way versus the bevel tool, if you're going to be doing multiple bevel operations, is that just save this uh, information in the layer and you can, like say we, I'm going to undo I'm going to come over here and delete and then create a, a curve again. Okay, 
just a real quick curve. Drop that in the background. Just select this poly, multiply, rail bevel, and I'm going to just apply this. And I go, yeah, I, re I really like that. If you save this curve, you could use it on future projects or future models to get the exact same profile. Because we can come back over here and use it over here at a later time. Okay, So that's one benefit. You're able to save the steps that you're going to use for multiple bevels. So that's just a real quick look at rail bevel. Uh, know that it doesn't have to be a rail or a curve like rail extrude. Uh, you can just have points. You can have polys. It can be points off of a, uh, a piece of geometry. But the important thing to know is that it's the point order and you can get multiple bevel operations in one click.